I posted this cover and it seemed like a lot of you liked it, so I decided to make a speed art video of it. A few of you asked for a full tutorial, the problem is that the video would just be way too long. I prefer to teach you individual effects that I used in this video and then you can just apply them to whatever it is that you're working on because it's always going to be different. The photos you're going to be working with are going to have different lighting, different colors, there's going to be different quality, it's going to have different features. So you're probably going to have to tweak whatever you saw in the tutorial. For example, here you see me trying to get rid of the signs in the background and you actually see me do it multiple times because I'm tweaking the tool so that it can give me the best results. So it's going to be different every single time. It's also not good practice to just copy and paste whatever you saw in a tutorial because you don't really learn that way. You're memorizing the steps, but you don't really know what everything does. Now, a little of what I did for this cover. Most of you may have noticed that this time I didn't create an entirely new background because it was already a good location for this concept. There really was no point in photoshopping him from one location and putting him into another when we could just make this one work. And the key here is to isolate the subject onto its own layer. So firstly, I created a selection around the subject as if I were trying to crop him out. And then I created a duplicate of the original layer and put the duplicate inside of its own folder with a layer mask on the folder. So that now all the effects that I apply will be applied only in the shape of the main subject. Here you see me smoothing out the pixels. That's because the original photo was way too grainy. So to fix that, I used a smudge tool so that I can smooth everything out. And then I just bring back the details later on with a duplicate layer. But I'm going to have a more detailed video about this. In fact, I'm actually going to extract this part of the video and do a voiceover on that so that I can explain what it is that I'm doing. And I'm going to slow everything down. So I'm pretty much going to do most of it real time so that you can really understand the technique and how it is that I apply it. Overall, it really just helps so that it doesn't look like a plain image and it looks a little bit more interesting. I got rid of the pink color in the socks because it was just standing out for no reason. It doesn't match with anything. It doesn't really go with anything that's happening. So, and it's also really not one of the points of interest. It's also the reason why I took away the exposure from the shoe because it was just too bright and it was just grabbing your attention for no reason. There's nothing going on down there that I want you to see. I want you to focus on pretty much just what's happening in the background and on the artist. I don't really want your attention going down to the bottom of the image. So I try to control that a bit by making these areas a bit more darker. Next, I just apply some dodging and burning so that I can make this look a little bit more dramatic. Also, since I added a little bit more rim light to his left shoulder, I was losing some of those shadows, so I just had to paint them in again so that I wouldn't lose some of that detail. My goal here was to really make the place look a little bit more run down, make it look more grimy. So I added this rusty texture, except in the end, it doesn't actually look like rust. It looks more like water damage or just deterioration in general. Now about the shotgun. If you notice, the shoe has a little bit of a 3D effect going on because it's closer to the lens. It looks a little bit too big. If you notice, it's actually bigger than his hand. So I try to do the same thing with the shotgun. Since it has this angle where it's sort of pointed towards the camera, it actually does look a little bit bigger. That's just how the photo of the shotgun was taken. So I try to take advantage of that to make it look a little bit more dynamic. Since the oversized shoe is already there to sort of validate this perspective that I'm, that I'm working with. Next you see me change the color of the lights, that's because the white lights were just too plain for me so I also thought that it would look even more grimy if the lights were a little bit greenish. So I definitely had to change the color of the lights. If you're ever working with an environment like this where you have a natural light source or even if it's coming from light bulbs and you have them within the frame, you definitely want to take advantage of that and change those colors to whatever color you want because it gives you a good excuse to make your artwork look more interesting. Next, you see me adding more items and I was very careful to not add too many things because I don't want this to look cluttered or I don't want this to look too busy. 
And that's one thing that I always take care of my artwork from, trying to make things not look too busy or trying not to add too many little things because I have to take care of everything individually. And what I mean by that is the amount of detail that has to go into everything. It's just a lot more blending and there's a lot more things that can go wrong and a lot more things that you have to fix later on if by the time you're done, you're not truly convinced and then you have to go back and then edit everything one item at a time. And in the end, it just looks messy to me. So I really avoid trying to add too many little things. I only include essential items that will help me say what I'm trying to say. Sometimes something simple can really be the best idea you can have. In this case, I didn't really have to worry much about scaling or even blending because most of that was already done since I used the original background. But that's pretty much it. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments. Also, sometimes I post links to free downloads on Instagram, so you might want to check my Instagram from time to time or follow me if you want. You don't really have to, but just to let you know, I do post stuff on there sometimes that I don't post on YouTube. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next video.